but sometimes that's what you need to do is turn off that friends of a friend option so that way nobody can see you. Sarah, just to jump in here, over the next couple of weeks, just so you guys are aware, the Wisconsin Department of Justice just came out, um, just finalized uh, some, some pretty nice handy PDFs that we'll be sending out through the school's Facebook pages uh, that go over Twitter, Facebook, and they literally highlight that. They, mm -hmm. they on these PDFs, go over, here's what to check for location services, here's what to check for geolocation. Yep. Um, I'll tell you the most common one that, that I, I see with kids at school is taking pictures. Um, if you download a photo off of your Facebook account, if I can get into your Facebook account, I will tell you 75% of the time I can pull the location that that photo was taken in off of your, off of your picture. It looks like a very innocent picture on the screen, but that photo has in its meta details the location it right. was taken in. Um, so, so we'll send that out just so you're aware. If, if you're friends with, uh, or if you follow any of the three schools, we'll send that out in the next week, week and a half. Here. So like that PDF is very similar to what I found on missingkids.com. Um, you kind of have to dig, it's over by like that, I think it's under the education or resources tab, but that's almost, it gives you like, the links that you can follow to dig into these types of apps or dig into social media and figure out how to protect yourself and how to use them. Like, I have no idea how to use Instagram. Not a clue. So like, I am clueless. But tell me how to use, like, skip the games and purchase a person online. I got this. <laughs> Any other questions? The best thing to do with that is bring that cell phone. Don't talk, like don't try and delete it. Don't close out of the app. Bring the entire thing to the police department because if that person is local, we might be able to get an IP address or locate them and go after them. So a screenshot. Don't take a. Do not take a screenshot. Just keep it. Yep. Just keep that app open. Keep that social media app open because there might be a way we can dig into that. Absolutely. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, some of those people are literally across seas and just randomly spurt out crap, but keep it. Because I'd rather look into it and find out that it's something we can't track than not look into it and be like, oh, it's the dude down the street. So, any other questions? There's just one other thing I just want to highlight that, that Sarah's been talking about a lot tonight, but just to get reiterated just to us here in, in Bozani and in our community, um, she's mentioned a lot of one of the best things to me to, to keep an eye on your kids is emphasizing the fact of being friends with only people you know and only people you recognize. And just to hit that home a couple years ago with our police liaison officer, before we gave your kids Chromebooks, um, we did that. We created a fake boy and a fake girl. Um, I literally pulled two of my former soccer players in Wausau, their pictures. Um, your students had no idea. They've never met these kids. Uh, each of those accounts today has over 300 friends of Mosny students. Um, on that. None of your kids have ever met, those, those people don't exist, they're fake names, they're fake people. Um, the amount of messages we've gotten, the amount of times I've had to go to uh, Eric and say, hey, here's this uh, 24, 26, 28 year old uh, guy who just sent a message to this 15 year old girl on, on this account. Um, it's very real and, and there's so many conversations we've had with kids of like, well, it's no big deal, they, they can't see anything on my account. You can see a lot of stuff on, on your account, but I still think there's this popularity of Adam, you know, get another friend, make it look good. Oh, they're friends with the one I hear a lot is, oh, well, they're friends already with so and so, so it must be okay, I must know them. Well, that, that's not the case, you know, that's just not true. So um, it, it certainly is, is something that, that point alone, I think, can make a major impact to emphasize to your, to your children. There are people out there that will spend the time to create a social media account that looks like a 15 year old or looks like a 17 year old. They will take the time to make that profile look real. And they're not always school guys and they're not always cops. They're doing it on purpose so they can exploit your child. And unfortunately, children fall for it. You can't blame the kid. 
but they both grow. Hand up, I saw it. I created a bank account this is like last year to follow one of my children, and in a matter of an hour, I switched friends. Yep. I didn't know any people. Nope. So funny story, I had created a fake Facebook account a couple years ago. Um, in fact, it got shut down by Facebook, because um, they didn't like it. Anyway, <laughs> way to go, Facebook, for finally catching up on the times. Um, my profile, I went on Pinterest and looked for hot blonde smoking a weed pipe. <laughs> okay, don't do that, by the way. <laughs> Just don't. Luckily, I have, like, access at, the, at work, so I can basically go on any website I want to go on and nobody bats an eye, but just don't do it. Just don't. Anyway, so I found it. Was, she's a beautiful blonde. It was a black and white photo, and she's smoking a bomb. I cropped it, so all you could see was like part of her eye, her blonde hair, and part of the bomb. And then I threw up another photo. I think I threw up a pit bull photo, because I, I own a pit bull, so I threw up a pit bull photo. Um, I think I threw up like a beach photo. I think I only had like five or six pictures on there. And then I liked a couple of things like movies and crap. I had close to like four or five hundred friends, something like that. And I was fake. You know how many people started messaging me? I had one guy offer to take me on vacation. He wanted me to basically be his sugar baby. Um, I had one guy ask for sex. He wanted me to send him photos and sex videos. Um, I had one guy just want to meet me to have sex. Um, I had one guy try and sell me weed. I actually knew who he was, so I told his probation agent what he was doing. Um, but like you said, I, just like that, all because of just the right type of photo. But I was friends with all ages. I was friends with minors. I was friends with adults. I sought out dopers because that's what we investigate is drug users. But just like that, I had all these friends and I was being solicited for sex through messaging. That's where a lot of it happens. Oh, another thing to kind of keep in mind. Some of these apps have private groups. So Kick, I just found this out. Um, Kick actually has a private group for sugar babies and sugar daddies. Has anyone heard of that term yet? Okay, so sorry, but here we go. <laughs> You're never gonna let your kids go on the computer again. Sugar babies are young females, so anywhere from minor age to like college age. They seek out or are being sought after by sugar daddies. Sugar daddies are generally like 18 year old males and up. A sugar daddy will pay an allowance to the sugar baby for videos, photos, dates, meetups, sexting, whatever, and that's what they do. Kick actually has a private group for that. Um, I found this out via a 16-year-old runaway from, she's actually from Forest County, but she's placed in Marathon County, and she's a runner. She met a 19-year-old boy who she didn't know on Facebook and decided to go with him to Lacta Flambeau and Eagle River for the weekend. Because that sounds like a smart thing to do. But she thought he was her friend. And she's like, well, he had a girlfriend. At least I thought he had a girlfriend. I guess I really don't know, but I trusted him. He seemed really nice. Okay. He also likes to hang out with runaway girls, we found out later, the hard way. Um, but she would send nude videos and photos through Kit or through Facebook Messenger, and I think she said she used Instagram. And these sugar daddies would pay her through the PayPal account that she set up. Nobody was telling her to do it, but that's what she was doing. She was making anywhere from three to 500 bucks a week. A little entrepreneur, I guess. But there are actually groups where you have to be 18 and under, and then 18 and over. Going through her chats, mind-blowing. She actually had was talking to a guy who said he was in Florida, but now in Canada on a business trip, he had a condo and all this expensive crap, and he was sending her pictures. She believed him. Like, she believed he was a real person, that he loved her, and he couldn't wait to meet her in person. I'm um, pretty sure those were Google images, but I don't have the heart to tell her that. 
but she truly believed that these people were her friends. She's like, well, I can tell if they're fake. I can tell if it's a fake profile. I'm sure you can. But that's what they're doing. So be aware of those private groups within apps. Because I just found one. Yeah, what do you need? Or tell them, be like, you know what? So your friend has a smartphone, but 